Welcome to the Blake and Taylor Guide to Creating Patina with Chalk Paint. What is Chalk Furniture Paint? It's an easy decorative paint that adheres to a number of different surfaces with minimal prep. Australian made, premium quality and water-based, it's as easy as 1, 2, 3, just clean, paint, protect. If you are new to furniture painting, make sure you check out our beginner's guide and other paint techniques before watching this video. Turn outdated furniture into something beautiful. In this video, we'll show you a number of paint techniques to help you create a beautiful paint patina. Before you start, plan your design on paper before you begin. Gather inspiration. Decide on your color palette and paint techniques. Sketch out your piece and map out light and dark areas. Let's begin. Your base coat and texture is the foundation on which you build your layers. Start with a neutral, soft color. One to two coats will be enough and allow to dry for 24 hours. Gather your materials. Step 1. Make sure your piece is clean. Wipe down and remove all grease and dirt. Apply your paint. We want to create thick paint texture with visible brush marks. Try pouncing your brush or dabbing paint on with a sponge for more raised texture. Your paint will naturally thicken if you leave the lid off for a while prior to painting. Add texture medium. You might like to add even more texture to your piece to create weathering and age. You can do this by mixing your own texture medium and dabbing it onto the surface. Apply the texture. Use an old brush or dab on with a sponge. Add texture to areas that would show natural signs of aging. Allow this first coat to dry fully for 24 hours. Color blending. Color blending should produce a soft, cloudy look. Blake and Taylor chalk furniture paint is ideal for this technique, as it is water-based and can be reactivated with water before it has had time to completely harden and cure. This technique takes some practice. Gather your materials. Before you begin, Working with a slightly damp surface will make it easier to blend your colors together and keep the paint moving. You can also mist your brush. Be sure to use a fine misting spray. If you are new to blending, try to choose two colors that will be easy to blend. The oval chalk paint brush is ideal for blending due to its soft synthetic fibers. You'll need one brush for each color you are using and a separate, clean brush for blending. Apply your colors. Using the same color as your base coat, apply a thin layer as your light area. Using a second brush, quickly add your second darker color, leaving a small space between the two colors to allow for blending. Start to blend. Use a third, clean brush to blend the two colors together filling in the gap. Do this by lapping the two colors over one another and smoothing out the edges. Use a cloth or paper towel to clean your brush between blending. Work quickly and don't allow the paint to dry out. Keep the surface wet. You may need to mist the area and your brush again to activate the paint and help further with blending. Make sure your brush strokes are soft and feather light, building pressure gradually. To add a more smoky look to your blend, you can try going over the areas very, very lightly with a dry brush technique. Sweep over areas to create a softer dusting of paint with a smudging effect. 
The key to color blending is practice. If you are new to painting, don't expect to get the technique right the first time. Try it out on a board first until you are familiar with how the paint feels. Practice makes perfect. Color wash. Adding a translucent paint wash, which is then wiped back, will add a faded look and bring all the colors together, producing a soft cloudy finish. How much water you add to your paint will determine the look you want to achieve. Gather your materials. Mix your paint. Start with one part paint to three parts water. This ratio will depend on how translucent you want your wash to be. We are mixing ink navy and steel grey to create a custom made colour. Apply your wash. Use a brush to apply your wash over the whole surface of your piece, making sure to get into all the carving and texture details. Once the whole surface has been color washed, gently dab and wipe areas with a clean, damp cloth to remove most of the wash. It's important to not let the paint dry out. Use your misting spray to keep the surface moist. Wet Distress Wet distressing allows you to gently wipe off the top layer of paint to reveal the base color below. This creates a natural-looking, worn effect without sanding. Use a damp cloth or soft scouring pad and gently rub along the surface. Be gentle and increase pressure as needed. This should be enough to gently remove the top layer of paint. If you find the paint difficult to remove with this method, it is likely the second layer of paint was left too long to dry. You can always lightly sand once it has dried to achieve a similar effect. Dry brushing. Dry brushing is a painting technique that involves using a nearly dry brush to apply a minimal amount of paint to a surface, usually to highlight a carving detail. This method allows the underlying texture and color to show through, creating a distressed appearance. Gather your materials. Lightly load your brush. Dip the tips of your paintbrush into your color, ensuring you have only a small amount of paint on the bristles. Wipe off most of the paint onto a clean rag or paper towel. Gently and lightly dust the brush over the surface of your piece. Focus on raised edges, corners, and areas that would naturally wear over time. Allow the base color to show through. Use controlled, swift strokes. For a more bolder color with your distressed look, Repeat the dry brush application, gradually building up the color. Remember, it's easier to add more paint than to remove excess. Sanding to distress. Start with a fine grade sandpaper and light pressure to ensure you only remove the top layer of paint. A medium grade paper and stronger pressure will help to remove all layers and reveal the timber below. Work along edges and corners where your piece would wear naturally. This will enhance the appearance of natural aging. Reveal the texture finish. Use your fine grade sandpaper to work over the areas where texture medium was applied and any other areas where texture was created with your paint and sponge. This is when you'll start to see textured patterns really come to life. Adding paint speckle. Adding paint speckle to your piece is an optional technique that adds even more character and interest. Add enough water to your paint to get the right consistency. You want just a light splatter. 
Experiment on a piece of paper first. If you apply too much or the paint splatter is too strong, soften it out by dabbing gently with a sponge. The effect should be subtle. Using black wax. Blake and Taylor black wax is a crucial element in achieving the aged look. It enhances the details of your piece, adds depth, and creates an antique appearance by settling into crevices and highlighting textures. Using a small flat brush, add black wax to areas that would naturally be in shadow, around the timber trim and in the carving detail. This will help to create depth and add the appearance of age. Seal and protect your piece with natural wax. A clean brush is the best option for a piece like this in order to get the wax into all the carving detail and texture. Apply a thin coat all over, wipe away the excess, and allow it to dry for 24 hours. Water transformation. Have fun and experiment with Blake and Taylor paint. If you liked this video and want to learn more, then check out our other guides at www.blakeandtaylorpaint.com.au.